Welcome back, my ninjas, to another Seven Ninjas Studios Contrast 101. I'm going to show you the very basics of using contrast paint to paint a Kroot warrior. Um, we're going to start with Dark Oath Flesh for the skin tones. Dark Oath Flesh is going to give us a nice tan color. And you can see I'm applying it fairly heavily with a number five layer brush. I'm making sure to allow it to pool. And that's something very important about what's going on here. I'm not getting it into the hair, although it's it's a pale enough color that it wouldn't matter if I did. We're just making sure we go over the arms, we go over all the musculature and all the little details in the skin and let it pool uh, in those crevices. It's very important it's that it's going to help us bring out that detail, and that's what the contrast paint is really good for. Going over the hands, the fingers, the wrists, things like that. And we're going to get a little bit of it in places that it doesn't need to go, but that's okay. You can see I'm touching it back up to get it to pool on the top of the head. There's a little bit of some confusion around the uh, cloth. Uh, that goes over the backs of these guys. I think I got some areas of cloth that I wasn't intending to get <clears throat> But that'll be okay. We can fix any mistake you make with contrast paints like any other color of paint You can fix later uh, Just by painting over it with a white or with the same color as your spray coat All right, and we're going to give all of that a moment to dry there. Good. Now it's dry. We're going to come in with a wildwood. I love wildwood. It's one of my favorite colors in the contrast range. A well-shaken bottle of wildwood, and we're going to go over the wooden parts of the handle of the gun. And one of the reasons we're doing this is this crude is a very brown character, a very brown creature, a very brown dude. And uh, I wanted a color that was going to contrast while still looking like it was wood. Uh, Wildwood being so dark relative to the uh, Dark Oath skin and relative to the other colors that we're going to be using shortly, um, including Psychor Brown and Gorgrunta, uh, which I believe we used the Gorgrunta in the previous step and I didn't call that out. <coughs> Pardon me. So we're going to pick out a couple of details here with uh, with this wildwood. And then we're going to come through and we're going to pick out a little bit more with the next color. Now the wildwood's put away. Now, this is our Cygore Brown. And we're going to put our Cygore Brown and we're going to use this to help pick out the quills a little bit better. One of the things we're going to do, we're going to put it at the very base of the quills and bring it out just just a little bit. It's not gonna blend because the the uh, Gorgrunto isn't wet. Or is that, uh, did I use Griffhound Orange? Either way, the orange, the orange at the tips of the quills isn't quite wet. 
so it's not going to blend. It is going to be a fairly abrupt transition, but that's okay. You can also see that the orange shows through the quills here, and that's going to give us the effect that we want of it looking like a more natural transition from dark to light. We're also going to pick out all the little little spiky, spiky bits on his arms and legs. We've got that put away. We're pulling back to the orange. We're going to tap his beak. Just the lower beak. And then we're going to tap his belly. Give that a second to dry. And now we're going to come back with our white. And we're going to cover some of the parts that we mistakes on earlier. Now we're grabbing skeleton horde and we're going to go over the straps on the gun there. Oh, that's going to make them look like a distinct and different color of brown. Uh, and that can be a linen or it can be a leather, uh, but it's distinctly not the same color as uh, his own skin. You could also choose uh, snakebite leather. You could go with a different color entirely for the straps. I'll be doing the sash across his torso uh, red, and you could choose to do red in almost every place where I'm doing skeleton horde. I just didn't want him to be that vibrant. I wanted him to have a little splash of color and not much else. So we're going with skeleton horde to keep those muted brown colors because those do read um, as uh, a more subtle and here's where we're taking the red and we're going to go over that sash and a couple of the other details on his belt, but mostly the sash. Right across there. everything there's had a chance to dry so now it's time to grab some lead belcher and we're going to go over pretty much everything else that's still white um, and make it silver you could then choose to go over it all with uh, null oil i do not do that uh, for this model there is no reason i didn't i just didn't um, this gets this crew warrior painted uh and it'll it took, uh, I, I speed my videos up by a minute and a half, or by 1.5, so a video that's 10 minutes long means it took me 15 minutes to paint this guy. And if you were batch painting these fellas, you could get um, a lot faster. You'd, you'd be looking at two to three minutes per step per figure. So uh, about 30 minutes to do all the skin for 10 guys, maybe 20, maybe less. handles untouched and we'll come back over those handles with skeleton horde again uh, to make sure they're a lighter color than that skin was and you could choose to go over the metallics with uh, known oil um, 
I think that might not be a bad idea if you want to. It won't do much for the shoulder pad, uh, but you could also choose to paint the shoulder pad in the same orange or in uh, whatever your tau sept marking color is. If it's a purple or a green or a blue or a white or a red or whatever color that is, that's what you can choose with that. And with this, we're pretty close to done. We're just going to do a couple of finishing touches and finish off that base. And then we'll be ready to go. There's the skeleton horde. So I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch me with this crew video. I'm having a great time doing these. If you are interested in supporting the channel, don't a like, a subscribe. If you hit that subscribe button, that helps me out a tremendous amount. Liking the channel tells me what kind of videos you like to see me work on. Uh, leaving a comment below gives me an opportunity to engage with you about the kind of stuff you'd like to see in the future. And I do have some videos coming up that came from viewer requests uh, that I wasn't intending to do originally. Um, and also, if you've got something very specific that you'd like me to do on the channel, you can re remember to hit up my Patreon. The link's in the description, patreon.com slash 7ninjas. That's the number 7ninjas. And for just a dollar a month, uh, you help keep this channel in minis, paints, and brushes. Anyway, that's a great it for me. I want to thank you so much for letting 7ninjas Studios help you take your crute from Greg. Great. <laughs>